Hey, what's up out there in YouTube land? This is Handy Saves Money with another money saving video for you. Today is a new one. So we have got a, uh, a Husqvarna Viking uh, Ruby here. And if you have a Ruby or if you have a Foff Creative Series or any of the similar machines that have a uh, needle threader that you flip down with a lever, sometimes that tiny little strip of metal that actually goes through the needle hole to pull your thread, that has a tendency to break. And uh, so when I started to put this on and look at, there's a little bit of adjustment that you can do and it's, it's a little less uh, simple than it looks. So I figured I'd make a little video here for you guys and hopefully this will help some of you out. Um, I actually uh, I mail ordered one, but then come to find out, I went to the, uh, the Viking rep that's in the Joanne Fabrics over here and they actually stock these things. They're about 12 bucks. And uh, you know what you're what you're actually buying is is just a, a tiny little piece of metal here. This is just the piece of metal that replaces the hook. So what we're going to go through is how do we replace this guy and make sure that he's lined up with the new needle hole. So I'm going to do the best I can uh, with this camera. Uh, there's a lot of small parts, but you know let's get started. So uh, first thing is obviously unplug your machine. Uh, cut your thread and remove it and then I like to take this top lid off So if you just pull gently outward The one end will come up and then you know lift right off and you can get that guy out of the way now um, I think it's easiest to probably get the foot out of the way as well so a standard slotted screwdriver and We can just go ahead and remove the foot as well Just to give us a little more space to work with and so we'll set that in our tray. Now, let's flip the machine over and lay it on its face. Go ahead and take your tray off too. You don't want to spill that everywhere. So let me get some light going on. What we're looking at in here is the threader pulls down and flips out. And the only thing we're replacing is this metal bar. So these two small screws are going to have to be removed. Now you might think that this is going to be kind of difficult to get your fingers in here and how are you going to get those screws out, but what I found, and I don't know if there's any metal in here to stick this to, so there isn't. Uh, so we'll work with the light as best we can. Um, I have a... I have a T6 Torx bit. So it's a real small little guy. Now, what I found is if you pull this guy down about part way, just enough to access this outside screw toward the outside of the machine, toward the, um, toward the, the non-spindle side, right, away from the needle. So if you take this guy loose about a turn, you will then see that this whole little plastic piece is just a, it's pinched on there. So if you take that loose, you can then slide this guy right off. And now you can see the threader. And this is actually the new one. So you can see that the, the piece of metal is the, the little tiny, I don't know if you guys can see that in there. There's a little tiny piece of metal that actually threads through the needle hole. And uh, at first I thought I'd have to take it in for service, but you know I started looking around and it looked like something that could be pretty easily done. So, what we do to actually replace it, is, and I hope you guys can see this well enough, I'm trying to find something metal that I can stick my light on here without blinding everybody, but I'm not sure that's going to work, so uh, I'll just set that guy up here. So, this is our our little uh, mount here and so make note that the split in the mount that allows it to pinch onto that shaft this split goes on the same side as the hook so since we already loosened this screw I'm gonna go ahead and take it the rest of the way out and then set that guy aside and then this screw and you'll notice that your Torx bit, the, the screws want to stay on the Torx bit. So that actually works to our advantage because what we can do is we can take this guy loose and there's a little bar. Uh, this is a little metal bar here. Um, 
it's kind of like a reinforcing plate or of some sort. And so that needs to stay. So what I did is I took, I took my piece off and then I carefully removed my old one. And then the new one, obviously, you're going back into the, the hole closest to this brass rivet. And then remember, this screw that we took out was the opposite of the pinch screw. We took that pinch screw out first. So we're going to go ahead and get that guy started. Don't tighten it all the way. Let it, let it loose here until we get everybody settled. So then we'll take our new screw. And now remember, there's a small reinforcing plate here. So make sure you go through that. And then through both layers of your, this is kind of a, a two-piece riveted together kind of deal. So, um, so you're going to get this guy started now. And so we're going to, cinch this guy down but we're gonna we're gonna leave it kind of loose on that side and with this the one that's not on the pinch side just just snug it till it stops don't tighten it anymore yet even you know turn it a 16th just to so it's a little bit loose in there because we want a little bit of movement to do the final adjustment because that's where a little bit of massaging is going to come in handy so so now we've got our new threader on here. I mean, that, that you know, wasn't too bad, right? So let's uh, flip our machine back over. And so if we look in here, we can see our bar. And the bar, you know, our, the, the shaft, is a, it's a slot, right? And so obviously it only goes one way. And so it's going to want to go on about like this. I'm sorry, let me correct myself. About like this, obviously the, the brass is gonna go toward the back side of the machine. So we're gonna slide this guy on first, just like that, and push him up. But you don't wanna push this plastic piece, when we go to tighten it, you don't wanna cinch it um, so tightly against this second piece here that it impedes the, the rotation. You see how that rotates. And so if you push this too far up on here and tighten it, it's actually gonna make your, your threader feel sticky. Uh, so we don't wanna do that. So um, for this guy, what I did is I, I pushed him up just loosely, and then we're gonna tighten the pinch bolt first, which is the one that is gonna be toward the outside of the machine. So go ahead and tighten that guy down first and then kind of feel your your threader make sure it feels like it normally would and if it feels about normal uh, then we'll go on to the next part now this is where it gets a little bit tricky um, and I'm sure that you're not going to be able to see it on this video but what we have to look at next and it's easiest to do it from the front is when we pull the threader down, we're looking at that, that fine piece of wire that is going to actually come through the needle. And so in my case, it, it doesn't quite, it, it's too far, right, first off, it's too far to the left. So, um, and this is where that, that massaging factor I told you guys about comes in. So what I'm going to do to resolve this is first thing is I'm going to, I'm just going to get a hold of this bar uh, with my two fingers like so. And I'm actually putting force on this bar toward back side of the machine. So I'm moving the bar that way to make sure that my little wire lines up. And because there is a little bit of movement. And when you, when you loosen it, you'll feel that you'll feel it move a little bit. So once you get that little bit of movement out of it, you can go ahead and cinch back up your uh, the, your pinch bolt here. And so now we're, you know, make sure you're not too tight between these two pieces still. Good. And so now that we've moved it over, hopefully, um, so we can go back down here and we're once again watching that tiny little piece of wire. And see what I noticed on mine is it's, it's catching on the bottom of the needle hole. And so the reason why we didn't tighten that other screw is now what I'm gonna do 
is I'm just going to take my screwdriver and I'm gently going to push up on this bar. And what it's going to do is it's going to rotate around that pinch bolt. So it's going to raise it just a little bit so that when I push it through, and so I'm going to give it a little bit more. And you can apply a little bit of force to it because you do have to turn against this Titan screw. But when you, when you get it just right, you'll see, you'll hear it, it'll just barely click through. But now, when you pull that threader down and you come all the way to the bottom, it's just going to pop right in through that needle. And so we know that that needle is going to be good. So let me, just for grins, let's get a piece of thread here. So if I'm simulating threading my needle and I let go, well, I kind of didn't do it right, but you can kind of see it, it pulled that thread right through. So, and then there's my my threaded needle. Um, so now that we know that we've gotten that right and we know that it is in the right place, don't forget to come back to the other side and now we're going to cinch this guy up so that he doesn't move. And it doesn't take a lot of force, it is just a little plastic, you know, so let's, let's verify that both these guys are snug. Okay, so now we got them both snugged up. And before we call it good, let's go back and check again because we did, we didn't move those screws around. So let's go back down and there it is. It pops right through the hole. No problems. And, you know, like I said, it's real hard to see on this video. Um, and I think I could use just a little bit of oil on here because it does, it does, uh, it does, it's sticking a little bit at the bottom here. You see that? I mean, that's not the end of the world, uh, but it's a little bit annoying. And I, I think maybe that's only because uh, I have it a little bit snug between these two pieces, like I, like I had mentioned earlier. But um, long story short, that's the easiest way to, to get this uh, threader replaced. So don't feel like you need to take your machine in to have it serviced. Uh, it's a $12 part from Husqvarna. And uh, most sewing machine, well, apparently for sewing, for Husqvarna anyway, the um, Husqvarna reps that are uh, in the little kiosks in Joann's did have that part. They had a whole bag of them, as a matter of fact. And um, I'll have to look. I'll put it in the end of the video. But you can, th this same threader hook works on uh, several Husqvarna machines, except for, like, uh, the Epic that has the fully automatic needle threader. Obviously, this isn't going to work for that. Um, it also works on several FOF series machines. Um, so chances are, if, if your bar looks like this one that we took off, then it's probably the same one. So even if you don't have a FOF rep, you know, down the road and you have a FOF that has a bad one, go over to the, the Husqvarna rep in a Joanne Fabrics or wherever there happens to be one, uh, and they should have those on hand. Um, so hopefully I save you a little bit of time and money here and uh, save you from having to take your machine in to get a full service when all you really needed was a, a new needle threader hook. So uh, this has been Handy Save Money and I'm saving you money by helping you change your needle threader. So until next time, be safe out there in YouTube land. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Mm. The happy birthday, Dad. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's whipped cream. They love it. They love it. So happy birthday, Daddy. I'm eating all your nummy nums. Is that good? <laughs>